Hello and welcome to a special edition of Spotlight. My name is Chance Jagir and tonight we'll be taking a look at the experiences of international students as well as the various cultural centers at OSU. I'm joined by two very special guests, Su Yan Wang, the former president of Oregon State's Chinese Student Association and a current senator on the ASOSU, and Robert Shaw, a second year student in the engineering master's program. International students are a big part of the campus experience at OSU. Last year, there were nearly 50 countries represented by the student population, totaling about 3,500 international students, about 12% of the student body. The largest portions of our international population is made up of people from China, Saudi Arabia, and India. To accommodate such a large population, Oregon State has a designated residence hall to meet the needs of international students in the International Living Learning Center, or ILLC. This building has dorm rooms and classrooms, as well as a full-fledged grocery store on the first floor with a large selection of produce and several Asian foods. There are also seven cultural centers located around campus. The Asian Pacific Center, the Lonnie B. Harris Black Cultural Center, Cesar Chavez Hispanic Cultural Center, Etihad Cultural Center, Native American Longhouse Inahas, the Pride Center, and the Women and Gender Center. So, did either of you know about the, two, the seven cultural centers before you arrived at Oregon State? Uh, we'll start uh, with you. So I know those culture centers uh, during our promotions for a Chinese Student Association. So they were, being, they, they were actually super helpful and friendly. So whenever we need our event to be promoted and we need extra help from them, so we just bring in our material. They were, they were just happily to, to distribute them among their groups and even have shared their email list with us. Oh, yeah, they great. were pretty friendly. Yeah, I'm sure. I'm sure working together goes, <laughs> just goes uh -huh. hand in hand. You mentioned the uh, spring festival before we started rolling. Were they a part of that uh, event as well? Yeah, uh, it's called China Night. We call this event China Night. So it's it's pretty much we bring Chinese performance and our Chinese authentic Chinese food to the community. So it's our largest event of the year, and that's pretty much. Uh, it's really January or February of the year and it rotates every each year, varies from days, but that's about the time. Uh, Robert, have you been to either of those events? Yes. Um, yes, and I have been a performer. Like yeah. Oh, really? Yeah. 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 performer. Yeah, just uh, be a performer. Are you dancing? Or? Yeah, I yeah, dancing. Oh, great. And also for, also, and also for the uh, martial art performance. Oh, really? Yeah, this is a double performance. What form of martial arts? Uh, yes, yeah, martial arts of Chinese Kung Fu. Yeah. Okay. And also uh, the uh, next year, no, it's the, 2019, and I, I has been um, um, cook. Yeah. Oh, really? I've been cook. Yeah. Okay. Uh, is it is it more traditional meals or uh, what, yes, uh, what kind Chinese of traditional meals? Yeah. Okay. Right. So, have you uh, had a chance to visit any of the other cultural centers around campus? Uh, the cultural center. Right. Um, before I arrive here, I don't know. But um, when I arrive here and uh, when I come here. One of my friends and uh, lead me to uh, one, of my, one of the cultural center and uh, do some about the relax. Mm. So that's why I know the, some of the country, culture ce um, cultural centers here. Yeah. Right. Well, uh, we'll see it later in the show. The other day, we went out and uh, filmed interviews with staff members at various cultural centers. And <coughs> that was the one thing I really took away from the experience was they're, they're very welcoming to uh, all students. Yeah. And um, they're very... I guess cozy is the word I'd use. Right. Uh, we went yeah. into the Cesar Chavez Cultural Center, and there was a room. They had a bunch of nice couches. They were watching right. Aladdin, uh, you know, um, video games. There's free printing at a lot of them, and uh, snacks and kitchens. So yeah, there's lots of great resources there. Yes. Um, so. Uh, you were the president of the Chinese Student Association. Would you like to talk about how you ended up at that position and? how you were involved with uh, just that sure. asset? Sure, uh, probably three years ago. Actually, it's three, two years ago. So one of my friend was in the, uh, in the CISA, CSSA, and she was just elected as uh, chief of one of the departments. And they were, short, they were short on staff, so she asked me if I would just join to help her. At the time, I didn't know what they were doing, and. From my perspective, by the time, I thought they were just having an event and having fun, just a group of people. And after I joined, I realized they were, we were actually doing stuff that's uh, sharing our Chinese culture to the community mm -hmm. and helping our Chinese students to blending into OSU community. 
And that was just something I felt really matters to either to my culture and to my friends. And the second, uh, that year we had our China night. I was a planner that year. And with, with our with this, uh, help from LaSalle staff, and we were able to held the best event of the year. That China night was actually the best event of OSCU that year. And with, with my contribution of that from the event, I was elected as a president. Okay, great. Yeah. This has been a pretty good discussion, and we're going to go now to our pre-recorded interviews with the Cultural Center staff members. Let's hear what they had to say. So, uh, how long have you worked at the center? Um, this is my first time working at the center, so about four months, maybe. Yeah, I also started working at the beginning of fall term. And what made you want to apply and want to work at this cultural center? Initially, I'm from Los Angeles, and it's much more diverse than Corvallis, so I never really felt as I had a firm grasp on the community um, until I started working here, and I'm glad that I found like that second home, and I want to be able to expand that to other people. I started working here because I think knowing that there is a place for me and for people like me here on this campus at Oregon State, um, it's very... It, it feels nice, and like Leah was saying, it's a second home for us. They provide a lot of resources, and it's just it's a great place to just hang out and meet new people. Are there any uh, special activities or resources that you'd like to talk about? Um, I mean, we do like highlight um, certain activities during each term. So during fall term, there's like Bienvenidos event, which is like a welcoming back. We personally host some activities, but also a lot of the space is just reserved for the community and for students. Um, they can use the building space for dance practices or um, organization events. They could come in to study, yeah, for study sessions, stuff of that nature. So it's more of like giving back, not really like hosting a bunch of events. Our, our goal is to be, we're here for the students, and led by the students pretty much. And what made you initially want to apply? So when I first came to OSU, I didn't really see outlets for Native students on campus. So just seeing this own structure being represented for Native students really made me interested. And the program that, that they provide throughout the year really solidified my choice to apply. And are you a member of any tribes? Or are you a member of a tribe yourself? Yes, personally, I identify as Duny, Navajo, and San Felipe. Those are all Southwest and not Native to this area. But regardless, you do not need a tribal affiliation to be part of the center or come to our events. And what activities and resources are available at the at this cultural center? Yeah, so um, a lot of the stuff we provide here at the Ina House are mainly for community building. We have a large scale of indigenous books for classes that have, are provided through OSU. Um, we have printing and other a kitchen as well as um, events throughout the year. One of our bigger events are Native Feast, which we just got done with. And in the spring, we have um, Salmon Bake. And that's a larger event that usually wraps around the whole campus. People really like this event, so yeah. Um, I don't think I experience as much of a, cult uh, a culture shock as other people. Um, I think I dealt with it pretty pretty well. I was just trying to having a normal having normal conversations kind of led to me slowly fitting in um, into society. This place, this pl the Itahad Cultural Center. I mean, it's my favorite place on campus. I mean, I've been working here for this is my second year working here now, and it's just really really nice, and I appreciate every moment of it. Welcome back to Spotlight. So. Uh, we just watched our video in the studio, so what did you two think of it? Was there anything that new that jumped out at you? Uh, pretty much some of their event, I did not heard of it, but it sounds really interesting. I like the baked salmon event. Oh, I'm looking yeah. forward to that. I love delicious food. Mm -hmm. uh, Robert, also, what about you? Yeah, and also like in the interview, and I hear that uh, this is going to earn told us uh, this is a second home, for, uh, a second home for, for her. So I think the culture center is like the second home. It's like we share the culture and we, uh, we know the culture from each other. So uh, and for example, if I uh, go to a Chinese culture center, mm -hmm. and it's like I come back to China, and I feel like it feels like in the home, and I think it's very comfortable for me. Well, yeah. That's really great to hear. I'm glad. I'm. I'm glad that, that experience is available for people who are like so far from home, so they can have, you know, just that experience. So. Yeah. Okay. So, how was your experience just uh, being on campus? Like, what was what was it like getting adjusted to being in Corvallis and adjusting to the new climate? 
Mm, I mean, culture shock. And I had my culture shock uh, before I, I attended university. So during my oh, high school so. year, yeah, during my high school year, I was actually ex ex exchange student oh. in Wisconsin, super freezing cold over there. And I, I, was, uh, I was left in a public school instead of a bunch <coughs> of private schools. Mm. So all my friends, I was the only foreigner in the, in the high school. So I was living with my host parents, lovely people I loved in, and my culture shock was like, bam, that's it. Yeah, I was forced not to speak Chinese for over a year and speak, only speak English during my, during my daily life. And that's how I adjust my culture shock. Sure, okay. Uh, you, it clearly was a good experience because you decided yeah. to come back. Yeah. Uh, Robert, what about you? Did you do an exchange in high school as well or just uh, for college? No exchange, yeah, just for the college and uh, just for the graduate student. Right, for yeah, the yeah. master's. Yeah, so when I first come to the Cavalis, the weather is very weird for me and sometimes. Uh, and also the culture like uh, in mechanical engineering, uh, school, school of mechanical engineering and uh, less people, just a few people speak Chinese and uh, most of the people speak English and other languages. So. Um, we always use English, and then it's like a, uh, it's like a stone um, sink into the water. Okay. And when I submerge, and you will be a part of the water. Yeah. yeah. Right. You become just fully submerged in. Yeah, the... fully, fully submerged, and then I can I will be infected by the culture. Okay. Right. Yeah. So I will be a part of the culture. So uh, yeah, you mentioned that you went to another f university in China before you yeah. came here for your master's. Yeah. So what made you decide to choose Oregon State out of the thousands of universities in America? Um, because the Oregon State University is famous with its engineering, like the mechanical engineering, material science, and also and also uh, like the robotics. So I like mechanical engineering, sure. me mechanical engineering, and also I found the. Uh, uh, first university from the engineering I know is OSU, so I chose it. Yeah, the yeah. engineering program is a big draw for a lot of students. That, that's why I'm here. I'm a computer science major myself, yeah. so not as hands-on, but still in the <laughs> College of Engineering. Yeah. Uh, Sun Yin, what, what is your major? Uh, right now, it's supply chain management. Okay. Yeah. And uh, what, what made you gravitate to that? Like. Well, so. For my bachelor's, bachelor's degree, I studied accounting. And I, actually, I started as finance, and then I find finance was a little bit boring, and I went to accounting. <laughs> weird way, weird thinking. And then after I graduated, one of my professors, she was interested if I want to stay for my uh, 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 master program. And we just, uh, the COB just opened a new major Supply chain management is a is a major, uh, including a bunch of IT skills and oh, wow. yeah, big data analysis. It's kind of sounds like the future, and yeah, that maybe moving stay. forward especially. Yeah. Okay, this has been a pretty has been a great discussion as well. We're going to get ready to toss to a commercial break, and we'll come back to discuss the overall experiences of studying abroad and the value. Student Multimedia Studios is your one-stop shop for all of your printing and production needs. If you need a poster for a class or a presentation, we've got you covered with our large format printers. In addition, we check out all the equipment you could need for your projects and offer production consulting in our studio spaces. making a video or taking photos for a class, we have studios for photos, videos, and audio.
Student Multimedia Services is located on the main floor of the Valley Library, and you can find our hours posted at oregonstate.edu slash SMS. I joined Oregon Bee Network as a freshman. It was my second week of being a freshman here, and I was looking for an opportunity to get involved in something on campus, and I had done a little bit of high school journalism, not a lot, but I came up here to the fourth floor, I saw the TV studios, I saw the radio booth, I saw all the computers, and I thought, this is super cool. This is something I want to get involved in. And I joined the Barometer team as a freshman. I learned so many things that I would have never learned in a classroom. Not only did I learn how to do journalism, how to design a newspaper, how to produce a TV show, I learned skills on top of that that are definitely going to help me in whatever I go do with my life. These past four years, OMN has meant to me to be a place where I can come and be myself, where I can come and challenge myself, push myself, learn and grow. It's a place where you come up here and you think you know who you are, you think you know the type of leader that you are, the type of person that you are, but you'll look back as a graduating senior four years later and think, wow, I am not the same person as I was when I stepped on this floor the very first time as a freshman. My name is Lauren Sless. I am the producer of Spotlight at KBVR tv at Orange Media Network. Welcome back to Spotlight. I'm here with Sue Yen Wan and Robert Shaw. For this section of the show, we're going to be discussing the value of studying abroad as well as how it's been different than what their expectations might have been. So we'll start with that topic. So Yen, uh, what is the major difference between what you initially expected from studying abroad in the U.S. versus what it's been like? Well, there's been a lot. I mean, different perspectives of culture and le living styles and especially communication styles. Mm -hmm. Like uh, probably in Asian cultures, when we say stuff or ask for, uh, for asking for help, we don't do it directly. We usually just uh, imply it into the content. We mm -hmm. go around the topic and and the person receiving the message, he, he would just know what we are, are asking for. And But when we when I just got here uh, working with my American friends, when I implied stuff, they were mainly just thought I was just asking for a chit chat. I, I, or maybe just I have time to burn that chat. And that doesn't work really efficiently. Then I started adjusting my communication styles, and that's probably one of the examples. Okay, great. That was a great answer. Thank you. Yeah. So, uh, Robert, what, are there any other major differences between the culture in America versus uh, more traditional Asian cultures? Uh, the traditional culture in for Asian culture is like which, uh, um, because I have had a, because I have been a student in the in one. Uh, Chinese Chinese University, and I I know something about the information about the Chinese University, and we just have one standard for something, yeah, in Chinese universities. But here I found that uh, the standard can be various, yeah, it can be a lot of standards, and you can be any uh, anything you want. So mm -hmm. that is uh, different people have the different standards and a different way to go. So that's a difference. That means we have different directions to develop ourselves. Yes, yeah. so you mentioned the one standard for Chinese university. Could you uh, explain more about that for the viewers at home? Uh, you mean uh, what is a standard? Right. Yeah. What did you mean by th there's one standard? Score. Oh. Okay. Yeah. Only score, and everything can be a score. Like um, uh, our ability have a score, our mm -hmm. test score, and everything it uh, has a, has a score. So we should compete with uh, one point. Two point, three point. Oh, really? So it's that. So everything is about competition. Everything is about uh, is about competition. We ha because we just have one standard. So um, everyone can be one. Everyone can be one people. Okay. Yeah. I mean, I mean, I think he's saying what he's saying is in Chinese student community, uh, basically academically we are a bit competitive, and. You know, like sports, you really want to be the top one mm -hmm. instead of there's no one looking at you. And once you be the top one, people start looking at you and you get more job opportunities. I think that works pretty much 
everywhere in the world. Yeah, nice. Yeah. So, uh, so moving on from the academics of it, how does just like the social aspect of, uh, of Chinese university compared to American uh, colleges stack up? Uh, you mean the st standard? So, uh, social. It's more like the, yeah, the activities, the clubs, and just yeah. like just the relationships with your peers. Uh, this, uh, like the social club, like in my university in China, we just have um, 40, uh, 40 clubs. But here are thir uh, 300. Yeah. But here are 300 clubs, um, which can be um, more like society here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it can be a bit overwhelming, but with such a big number, there's bound to be something for everyone. Uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, was there anything more you wanted to add to that? No, that's it. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so we're, we're getting close to the time to wrap up, and we haven't gotten to this yet. There was a story you told me during the pre-show okay. about how you were almost impeached from your position as president. Yeah, so... Uh, probably in the start of this year when we were promoting our China night for 2019. And I told my, our staffs if they could sell out the tickets before the event, then I'm willing to dance on the stage. At the time, I thought it was an impossible job because we have, we have 900 seats to sell. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. And, and how, how much are the tickets, too? Uh, it was $5. Okay. Yeah. So... Right on, right on the day, during the show, they told me they did it. And then they pushed me onto the stage, and, and our, my co-president told me, if I don't dance right now, they were going to start an impeachment right away uh, while, while I was on the stage. And the music was rolling. I had no choice, so I just followed the music. Uh, that'd be yeah. some kind of performance art, having 900 people watch you get on page. Yeah, yeah. And also, <laughs> I'm an audience. I'm in the audience at that time. Yeah. Oh, yeah. really? Yeah, that saw everything. Yeah, that was okay. so, yeah I didn't yeah. know that yeah, part so before. Yeah, my best memories. Yeah, it's my best memories. I, uh, well, at least you got a good story out of it. Uh-huh. A little bit of embarrassment. So, yeah. you're a, you mentioned you were a senator on the ASOSU now. How, yeah. does, how does that process work? How did you get started there? <clears throat> so... Uh, while well, two years of my work in CISA, I started to realize uh, international, international student doesn't really involve with uh, OSU governing. So a lot of uh, position in OSU, they don't have a international student or whether is the international student doesn't really care about those positions. So I just kind of stood up and trying to be the first one and to let people know how easy it is for international students to get involved with OSU community and ASSU community. And, and right now, actually, there are many positions that's not filled, so you just apply. You, just apply. you don't even have to compete with each other. If you're qualified, then you get a job. And a lot, a lot of positions are actually paid, so... Oh, really? Yeah. So it's pretty easy for us to get involved. Nice. So is there any, uh, is there any advice that you would have given to your past self before you, before you decided to study abroad? Or advice you'd like to give to a, you know, a future international student? Uh, for, so for Chinese student, I would say be brave. A lot of time, you're afraid to not get stuff and then you don't ask for it. And what you, do, what you do, might don't know is if you just ask for it or putting effort, for, effort to it, it will, it will eventually come to you. Yep. In Chinese, we have a saying is once you have put in enough effort, success will eventually show up. Oh, I, th I think I've heard that saying. Yep. Uh, Robert, was there anything you wanted to say? Um, uh, my, my advice to the and to the future students, uh, especially for the Chinese student, is about the um, yeah, it's be brief, but do the adventure. Mm -hmm. um, I think ad adventure is about like the studying abroad. For me, is is an adventure. So um, in my university in China, and I was the number one, but here I'm the I'm not the number one. So I think it's very fortunate that I know I'm not better enough. 
I'm not good, good enough. So I think it's uh, go forward without any, um, without, uh, without any concerning, and you will know the, f uh, the future world is unknown, and uh, yourself is also unknown. Right, yeah, there's always more to learn, more to explore. Yeah. I mean, um, yeah, the, like, yeah, like, like uh, several years ago. Program. Yeah, like uh, several years ago, and uh, one of my friends told me, no adventure left incomplete. So adventure is very important for everyone. Yeah, yeah. Like especially with, uh, like you mentioned, there's almost 300 clubs on campus. Yeah. More activities even just around Corvallis. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, all right. Uh, you mentioned mechanical engineering. What's been the, the hardest part about that major and seeking your master's, uh, speaking a, in a different language than your home country? Uh, the, uh, the hard part? Right, yeah. Um, Yes, a different language can be is very hard, but I think uh, the hard part the hard part can be the academic things. Yeah, yeah. Still so for the research, yeah. A lot of uh, technical phrases for especially for his major. It's a bunch of words that I've never heard of it. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and it's yeah. hard even if you're a native English speaker. Mm -hmm. yeah, it's, uh, yeah, it's uh, very hard for even the native speakers, and also like some new things, and I need to. Uh, handle that just in a sh very short time. So I think uh, like the, something like neural networks, mm -hmm. like artificial intelligence, like deep learning. And uh, when I hear that, I know nothing about that. It's very far from life. Mm -hmm. So that's it's why, yeah, that's why I say it is very hard to learn because you cannot learn from your data site. Yeah, a lot of yeah. it's still very theoretical. Yes, mm -hmm. very theoretical. Yeah. So we've talked about the challenges and the hardships associated <laughs> with studying abroad, but what's been the, the best part? What's been the most rewarding part of your experience studying in the U.S.? Uh, friendships. Oh, yeah? yeah, I've made a lot of friends, and uh, both Chinese and, and I actually have friends from Arabic and also American friends. Uh, so in, in here, we are friends because we have uh, the same ideas, we have the same uh, hobbies, we do, we, we could hang out to, to kill time or we could just stay in the room and chit chat for over a couple of hours and we would just feel fine. And that's, uh, that's kind of friendship that's going to last real, very long, even after uh, studying. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, college is where you form those very deep friendships. Right. Uh, and also, in my, in my view, is also like the friendship. Uh, friendship is a, is a very important thing. And I think another one is like, you know the limitation, just I mentioned before, and I know I'm not a good, good enough. You know your limit, limitation, and uh, you will know the better people is very far from you, and it is higher than you, higher mountain. Yeah, higher, high, uh, the higher mountain is behind the higher mountain. Right. So higher and higher. So, but you will also know that's very important for me is I learned from Ameri American spirit. It's like you can break it, break mm -hmm. your limitation. Right, yeah. there's always another goal to reach. Yeah. All right. Well, unfortunately, that is all the time we have for tonight. Thank you so much to my two wonderful guests. Thank, thank you, you to the crew behind the scenes. And most importantly, thank you for watching. Be sure to check out KBVR TV on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, as well as our YouTube channel. Stay tuned for more great KBVR content. Okay. <laughs> 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 All right.